Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, I'm hoping our setup today is going to be a little bit better than normal. And today's date uh, is uh, December the 12th, 2019. We are running out of days for this year, Yana. Yes. Very I rapidly. We get this right because we are doing videos for how long and we still can get right things. <laughs> exactly. And and the funny thing is, is we are, we are trying to do this a little bit more professional. Mm -hmm. Our TV screen is not in behind us. It's just a bookshelf today because we are recording our screen as well. So we're hoping everything's going to work out pretty good on this. Uh, we will see as that time goes along just how well that works. Uh, but uh, we think it'll be a blessing to you. And eventually we're going to have it to where you have the split screen, things like that. We, our engineer guy supposedly is going to be coming this weekend, either Saturday evening or Sunday evening. And I don't know which one it is, but uh, uh, either way, it'll be late in the evening on one of those two days there. So we're going to get these things underway to where they work better but anyway today we're going to be able to edit in this broadcast where they have the screen recorded where they can see this better and uh, of course we're recording on camera so they can see us and hear us just fine as well and I think the audio is fixed because according to the camera the audio is working right okay. uh, so that should be fixed as well anyway let's get right into what's going on here um, we have President Trump has decided to sign this uh, executive order, as he Declaring calls it, Judaism as a nationality. Right. Where is the logic, Steve? Did we all lose any logical sense in the United States? Yeah, you know, before we even play that, maybe I should just show one scripture here, because what this reminds me of uh, is what I just it came to my mind right before we started the broadcast, and that's in First Samuel, when... Israel wanted a king to rule over them. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to be, as the scripture says, like the other nations. So let's take a look at this. You guys look at that on the screen here with us as we read some of the highlights of this. This is where Samuel's sons come to him. And of course, they say to him uh, that, uh, uh, you know, behold, thou art old and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all nations. They wanted to become a nationality. They were a people, but they wanted to be a nationality. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of, thy peop of the people in all they say unto thee. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me that I should not be king over them, according to all their works, which they have uh, done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, and that they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto you. Now therefore, hearken unto their voice, howbeit you shall earnestly forewarn them, and shall declare unto them the manner of king, uh, that shall reign over them. And all I can think about right now, Yanka, is that they're looking for what they call their Messiah, which we know is going to be an AI serpent Messiah. Eventually. Eventually, exactly. So this is uh, just first step into that, but it's even more, as you've brought out to us, it's the first step into the Noahide process. So Yes, in fact, Steve, um Yesterday was a very, very sad day for the United States. Very sad day indeed. I don't know how many Christians truly realize what has happened. But that's not a first stage. First stage was when they signed uh, Noahide laws into public law 10214. As you know, Chabad yes. with Schneerson under pretense of celebrating his birthday. They were very successful signing that as a public law, which a lot of people dismiss as a ceremonial law only and so on. Yes. And, uh, we went into that know, debate on John Moore's exactly. program just recently, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the callers had called in, and she's very passionate about the Noahide laws. And uh, I understand John tries to look at this as only a ceremonial law, but he began to really downplay it as if it's National Ice Cream Day. And I finally had to come to the woman's <laughs> oh, wow. defense on that, and yes. I said, John, look, if we were signing, uh, if the President of the United States was signing every year, Democrat or Republican, uh, for Sharia law in this nation, the people would be in up in arms about it. I said, and Sharia law calls for the beheading of Christians and said, so does the Noahide laws under 
the part of idolatry. Mm -hmm. And of course, I know you found out oh, something any, about that too. You're, so. you're not in a violation of any of the Noahide laws, any. Right. Now we are in the holiday seasons and um, if you had a Christmas at home and neighbor called on you, your head goes off because exactly you Christmas because you celebrated Christ. Let's get right into this. Let's play this. Listen to this. Check this out on your screen here. This is what happened. The signing Trump has signed the executive order. Not only that is taking away your freedom of speech, but it is the first step in the Noahide laws. No, so not first, second. Second step. And I'll tell you why. First step was uh, putting it into putting it into education public education law. law. And this is also, though, if I understand right, is effective on college campuses around through education. The, yes, through education. So this is how they work. They work through this education uh, platform. Yeah. You see, it's an education public law, and now it's in education where they're prohibiting speaking of Israel. But it, what's even negatively but what's worse Steve it's completely defies any logic can yes. Judaism in itself can it be a nation well as it's we as we just saw they did become a nation when but it was against God's will originally right so they're trying to do this again and they're trying to get that notoriety to become that again so obviously it's still against God's will perfect no, Steve, will. I'm talking about the fact that Judaism is Pharisaic religion. It's a religion. Well, that's completely so, different in itself. When we get into the Pharisaic side of it, the Hasmonean dynasty of what's today, they're not even real Jews. These are Edomites. Yes, but Judaism cannot be even addressed as a nation. Judaism no. is a religion. No, it's a, it's a can religion. We, can we talk about Christianity as a nation? Which race would we give to Christianity? Yeah. Do you understand? Can no, I understand say, that. So I understand Judaism that. is a religion, and now on a campus you cannot talk against religion of Judaism, or what's wrong with it, or how you disagree with it, because you're immediately anti-Semite. Right. So, well, it's a plan, though, as, as we already know. It is a plan of a new world order, and this is where it's going. This is what's going to happen. You want to go ahead and play this yes. here? President of the United States and Mrs. Trump, accompanied by the Honorable Jared Kushner, the Honorable Ivanka Trump, Oscar Stewart, and Jonathan Morales. I want you to know this. I want you to know this. Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner, and uh, Trump is going to mention that they actually are the ones who worked very hard behind this. Yes, and what notice happened. what's at the, at the, it is the Hanukkah menorah that's at the head of this. But no, they're Chabad, you see? This well, is Jared Kushner, yes. Kushner's Chabad. Yes. They're the ones who fought for this. South. Right. He will say that. It's okay to, you know, talk all the time. Okay. okay. Uh, Senator, where are you, Tim? You're up. There he is. And I said, you know what, Tim, you have a big vote coming up. I think you want to go back to the Senate. So I will tell you, without Tim, this wouldn't have happened. Tim Scott, thank you very much. We love you. Go back to the Senate and vote. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Milani and I are delighted to welcome so many friends and families to this incredible house, the White House, to celebrate this really sacred season and a very special time. To everyone here today, happy Hanukkah. He's talking to Jews. We're delighted to be joined by Vice President Mike Pence and his incredible wife, Karen. And if you'd both come up, Mike, wherever you may be, come on up. Karen, please come up. Also, uh, as you know, Ivanka and Jared have worked very, very hard in this whole You know what's interesting? Endeavor and many other endeavors. The vice I president was, was not brought in on the platform, but the instead, Jared and Ivanka were brought on the platform. Very the That's totally a disgrace like to, to the Secretary vice president Steve of the United Mnuchin, States. Secretary Betsy DeVos. Deputy Soon Attorney he's General Jeff Rosen. Hi, Jeff. You won't mind the Democrat. As well as Senators Tim Scott, who just left, and he's a fantastic guy, and James Langford. Where's James? Where's James? James, come up here, will you please, James? Did he have to go for the vote, too? All right. All right. Tell him we mentioned. There's his prompter. For a lot those of these of people are voting. It's <laughs> very important things right now. I'm saying, you know what? Get out and vote, right? And we have Representatives Doug Collins, John Gothheimer. David Cutshaw, Elaine Luria, Max Rose, and Lee Zeldin, all here. Where are they? Are you raise your hands? Are you here? 
Come on up if you want, fellas. Even the Democrat can come up. Here we go. Even the Democrat. It doesn't matter because up. behind the veil we are the doing. same thing anyway. Come on up. They just achieved nice major, major thing Hi. in their yes. agenda. Good. Hi, Doug. And trampled upon freedoms of American That's great. people. Hi, Lee. Good job, Lee. Wow. What a, what a traitor, traitor Trump time, is. Very much so. I also want to bring a friend of mine up. Uh, he's a tremendous success in so many other businesses, but they only know him because he signs Tom Brady's check every week. And he's a really, he's a champ, he's a winner. His wife, Myra, passed away a longer time ago than we think, Bob. I was a big, uh, I was a big tough time for you and uh, for me too and for Melania. Now he's I just going want to, to tell speak you, you've been a special friend and he will of speak of his Nobody deceased wife, how she wanted this Tikkun so, Olam, and that's when up. we can stop it. Okay. We'll talk about what Tikkun Olam is. And as usual, his team is mired in first place. Have you ever been in second place? Not too often. You know what I'd like you to do, Bob, while you're here? Because we could all learn from Bob. He's a champ. He's a winner. If you could say a few words about Israel, please. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm honored to be here at this time, at this event, because this is really a bipartisan issue. And I know previous, administra previous administrations had tried to do something in this area. and. We know that college campus is a place where you bridge build and you include people and have education and not be something that is exclusive uh, and drives people away and generates hatred. So I'm so proud that in, at this time we're doing something that is so bipartisan. And uh, my wife of blessed memory would be smiling now because she loved America first and Israel and wanted to build bridges between the two places and have Tikkun Olam. And there I we think go. That's it. So it's that. time to talk about what is Tikkun yeah. Olam, Steve. So and by the way, you know, the, yeah. the one thing about there is not really a menorah. And a lot of people don't no, know it's that. Not. It's Hanukkah. It's, they call it menorah falsely. It's Hanukkah. What it is, is if they call Christmas tree an idol, then that's definitely an idol. That's yes. nothing God has commanded. And uh, it's, it's Hanukkah with nine candlesticks. Exactly. Because okay. the but, real menorah is seven. Right even as it is in the book of Revelation. It doesn't change in the book of Revelation. Right. It's still the menorah. All right, anyway. so we'll continue on here. And by the way, just, just so you're aware too, when we're speaking on here, I don't know how this is going to work. I know the computer is recording the screen for us. So when we're talking, we'll have to run double. So we'll try to, to talk too much during those times because I don't know how it's going to sound because it's going to pick up two different volumes and, and we'll just oh, we'll, we'll work out the details as we go. That. It's all right. It's all right. No problem. All right. So let's go on to two uh, uh, to quick kick in that, Steve. To, to, <laughs> I'm supposed to be Jewish and supposed to know how to say things. <laughs> Tikkun Olam. I hate seeing it in English because it's harder for me to do it that way. Anyway, as you guys can see here on your screen, Hebrew for world repair. Uh, has come to uh, uh, connote Promote social action and the pursuit of social justice. The phrase has origins in classical rabbinic literature and in Luriani Kabbalah, a major strand of Jewish mysticism originating with the work of the 16th century Kabbalist Isaac Luria. Well, that told us everything, didn't it, Steve? You're not kidding. Right. You need to really on. expound on that one there well, because you repair. are a Kabbalist expert on no, these not. issues here. <laughs> I'm definitely not a Kabbalist expert. I'm just uh, studying what it is so I can understand what is happening in the world. But what is said that, yes, uh, in a White House, we have such things said as Tikkun Olam. So that tell, told us completely everything. Who Trump is, it's, what is he about, well, he, why is he in the White House, who controls him, whose puppet is he? When we talk about world repair, yeah. though, and I know we're going to get into this more with some of the, uh, with the one uh, Jewish rabbi that you have on here, but something that people need to understand as well is uh, Tikkun Olam, it is um, bringing about the utopia that Israel is looking for, world domination is really what it's about. It's not just a world repair of like, oh, let's, let's stop all the sinning in the world or nothing. It's not, it's nothing, anything good 
this is about the most evilest thing that could ever happen in this world because this is not even being done by true Israelites. Well, the problem is it's a different gospel. See? Exactly. And it's now in political world preached that different gospel of Tikkun Olam. It is a Jewish gospel. Tikkun Olam, again, is a Jewish gospel of Jewish utopia. It and, is and the I, restoration of the Jews as a nation. They need, needed that recognition and they got Trump for that. And let's let's things. clarify one thing yes. though, because mm -hmm. it's really not fair to a lot of Jewish people that uh, would not want to be associated with this, right. because it is a Pharisaic. Uh, I know they call them. You see, Pharisees are identity thieves. Yes, they are. I call them. They're Edomites. They're Edomites. They're ad identity thieves, and this is what happened. They took the name Israel for the state they created yes. through Rothschild. Yes. And of course, that confuses minds of a lot of people, especially reading Bible, Old Testament prophecies, and yes. they're applying it to actual political state and people who live there. Right. Okay. So they're, they stole, I, they're basically stole identity of what Israel is, what is the spiritual fulfillment of Israel. Exactly. Because there they, are real Jewish people right. out there that do not want any, anything to do with this. In fact, a lot of times, these are the ones that are fighting against Israel. In fact, these are the ones that stand up and, and speak against yes. what's going in on. In fact, Adam, Adam Green had a uh, show yesterday on this, uh, what happened in White House, what Trump has done to our nation. And uh, he had someone on, I'm not sure who, but uh, I still have to look into who, who that was. But um, they were talking about the fact that it was actually Jewish people, some Orthodox and some secular Jews who came against executive order. The, the Jewish people who truly love the, their country that live here and yes. they are first Americans, okay? And they said, wow, this is a violation freedom of speech. Of freedom of speech. Okay. Same thing here in Florida when they did the exact same. Right. The president did an executive order that covered all the colleges across the entire United States. Uh, the Florida, Florida governor here signed the exact same type of law that was voted upon and passed. And it was the Jewish community here in Florida that opposed it. It wasn't even the Christian community. No, it was the Jews. It, it, there um, were two rabbis and two Jewish attorneys that said, look, we love Israel, we love our people, but this is totally against freedom of speech. And you can't do it. And they filed an injunction against it. The attorneys filed an injunction Isn't against it. Yeah. And they were shut down. And many of these political Pharisee Zionists that were pushing it called them anti-Semite for doing it. Yes, and Christians don't file anything, Steve. They just watch, watch it, don't say anything. and. Many Christians uh, help it because pastors are for Trump and Trump can do no wrong and they don't see anything wrong no. with it. Wow. In fact, they've been conditioned to love Israel so much and to interpret uh, Old Testament prophecies in Jewish way yeah. that they actually think this is a good thing. So they're actually helping helping to for the demise of this nation and yes, they're they helping a future persecution of Christians that's coming. Okay, so, and, and they are not aware of it. They will wake up kind of late. But anyway, again, so what is it? Judaism uh, became a nationality. How can a religion become nationality? It's a religion. We yeah. have every right to disagree with religion. Right, because see, the thing is, you can't say that Jewish people are nationality because if you're taking it as a nationality, if you want to do it that way, we're an Israelite people. We are, oh, he are people Hebrew people. There are people of many colors. I mean, there are exactly. every single race of people. You know, there are black Jews, there are Asian Jews, there are uh, white Jews, there are all kinds exactly. of nationalities and races. So exactly. And we're throughout unite? the entire world. Right. So what, what, are they, what did they create? Can Jewish state be from true God? I want people... Now, at one point, we thought that Jewish state is from God, remember? Yes, I know. But I then know. our eyes kind of open. Can Jewish state... Be of God, Steve. Jewish me means to be Pharisee. That modern someone, term is terminology right. for today, yes, it would be a Pharisee it's a Pharise state it's a, it's a because it was yes. a Rothschild invention. Uh, I mean, we've had 
too many guests on that have proven the historicity behind Israel as a nation, how it came into being. And many of our listeners back when we were very pro-Zionist would write to us and say, Steve, you guys need to get this right. I mean, my That's gosh, right. you don't realize that the Zionists created the state of Israel? Uh, and that, well, oh, excuse me, not Zionists, but uh, the Rothschilds created the state exactly. of Israel with the Balfour mm -hmm. Declaration and, and all these steps that they did. In fact, when we were in Israel with Brother Paul, Paul Begley and his uh, beautiful wife, Heidi, uh, yes. um, you know, they were in a hotel right next to a Supreme Court and they were, on, you know, on, on really high blown away with the pyramids and stuff he there. he made all of these pictures of pyramid and, yes. and New World Order signs and all of yes. that. And he was making pictures blown away. He says, how can that be found here in the land of God? And he was just, he just couldn't even believe it. He even made a video back then about it. Yes, he did. Yes, so he did. So why? Because they created it. They created the Heidi, New World Order, created the state. Heidi also noted the, the ley lines that were in yes. around she Jerusalem. Yes, actually our guy showing us all the ley lines. The Illuminati <laughs> aspects of it. So. Yes, yeah, so how can we, knowing who created it and, and how they're planning to have a Jewish New World Order headquarters in Jerusalem? I, I remember, and I'll just say this quickly here, when we were going with them to all the places, Heidi really knew. She knew all these symbols and the Illuminati signs. They were mm -hmm. all through the churches, the Catholic churches. Only the Russian Orthodox did not have those Illuminati signs there, which just quickly I'll mention. I, we got a message. Someone last night wrote us that uh, Paul Begley uh, had gotten very sick. So we just asked people to pray for him. I know there's things yeah. people may differ with him on but you know still he's a christian and we ask you to pray for him that's so. right but anyway um let's just continue this, yeah, let's go into this article yeah i know it's especially crazy. me you know your yeah, husband you oh dyslexic to so many directions i have a hard time focusing back all right but anyway so let's look at this article right here uh this is on uh, breaking israel news uh adam Eliyahu Berkowitz, boy, this guy writes a lot of pro-Trump articles. And actually, he, me and him corresponded once before. He said he kind of watches me on his radar, but I don't think he likes the radar anymore. Trump to sign executive order declaring Jewish people a nation just as written in Genesis. Yeah. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Genesis 12, 2. Now, this is where they're justifying the nationality of, you know, this is totally different. This is, you know, completely different. Stephen, than, what, what uh, I noticed, I don't, I don't really want to read this article, but what I noticed is that uh, they are taking Old Testament prophecies and they're maneuvering it and using... Old Testament prophecies to justify <clears throat> what they're creating, their new world order. And since we were on a on, on a Tikkun Olam yes. page, I would like to bring up and read from the Jewish Utopia, which is basically a different way of saying Tikkun Olam or repairing the world. And I want to read you from the Jewish author their plans of what they're planning doing in Israel yeah can I just just one thing sure. because people might get a little confused sure. they just hear you know we sit there tell the people that this nationality thing with Israel is totally wrong we show them first Samuel where Samuel says you know he didn't want them to be like that but then now we read this in English that was uh, right here on your screen you know that uh, they're quoting from Genesis chapter 12 verse 2 I will make you a great nation and it sounds so so patriotic, so right. to speak, right? Let me just share with you, though, the Hebrew language so you'll know exactly what it is. Right here in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, and again, in English, I will make of thee a great nation. But if you look over there in, in the Hebrew language, he says that he's going to make them lagoi, gadol, okay? A great Gentile. Mm -hmm. So which way do you want to translate it? Nation or Gentiles? You're going to make, he's going to make them a great Gentiles. <laughs> so, yes. and, okay, and the point is, it's not meant to be the nationality like world governments. And that's how you put the balance in there. And I just want to bring that out because no, the word going 
goyim is the word used for that. Let us clarify what really it is. It is races of people mixed up that take Judaism as their religion or assign themselves to the Judaism as a religion. It is a Pharisaic religion based on the oral Torah, Talmud, Zohar, and Kabbalah. Okay, led by rabbis who are basically into Zohar and Kabbalah. Yes. Tanakh is not their main scripture. Exactly. Again, they're identity thieves. They take Tanakh and use it as a front cover while they're interpreting it through the glasses of Talmud. Yes. In fact, in the Talmud, rabbis say that they're above God. They claim in the Talmud that Almighty God yes. studies Talmud seven hours a day. I, I don't, I, you know, seven or nine, I don't want to lie which one it is, I forgot. It, but you're, you're exactly right, though. Yes, they're saying that even God uh, obeys the rabbis. So they're above God. That's the teaching. That's the true teaching. Yes. It's a basically supremacist view and worship of Jews eventually. This is what the religion is about. So, and now yes. they made themselves legally into a nation that can't, nobody can speak against. That's exactly okay. right. And trampled about upon Americans, which make, makes Trump a traitor of American people. And he just committed a treason that I hope one day, one day he's going to have to pay for that. Because this is absolutely the worst thing he could ever do. Yes. Right. Yes, it is. It is. It's, it is. it's a very, very serious crime. But anyway, can I go to this Jewish yes. utopia? I think uh, this is very interesting. I need to take my reader glasses on. I, I hate when I have to use this, Steve, because I hate how I look in it. But anyway, they tell you, Stephen, they tell you uh, what their plans are. All you have to do is look into their sources. And I will read a little bit uh, examples from several pages. It says, the city of Jerusalem will become the metropolis of the whole world and the nations will walk at her spiritual light. Then let me read more of that page here. Thus, by coming in contact commercially with Palestine, especially with Jerusalem, the seed of the Jewish utopia, the nations and rulers of the world will be greatly impressed by the spiritual unity of Israel so that they will be converted and will join Israel. Again, in the present era, only individuals were proselytes proselytized but in the era to come all the righteous will be brought under influence of God's presence it says in other words only those who are convinced of Israel's divine purpose in the world will be welcome to join Israel in the upbuilding of an ideally spiritual life on earth Israel, the ideal righteous people, will thus become spiritually the masters of the world and will spread their moral and spiritual influence from one end of the world to the other. That's Noahide laws. Their moral influence is the Noahide laws. The very atmosphere of the new social order of the universal state which is Israel, will be saturated with justice and righteousness. Hence, with the advent of the Messiah, who will usher in the ideal era, all the national ensigns and laws, which are barriers to genuine international peace, brotherhood and happiness of mankind, will gradually disappear. Did you hear this? All the national ensigns will gradually disappear? Yes. That means all the ensigns of the nations, all the flags will disappear and there will be only flag of Israel standing. Okay? This is their, that's their tikkun That's olam. the plan. That that's is, the that is, the, exactly. That's the that just mentioned in White House. Okay, let me see. All will recognize one flag or standard bearing the name of God. I wonder what name they will put on, my, on it, Steve. 
Okay. It says the world will be one open city, free for intercourse of trade, migration, and education. The nations will consequently change their attitude toward Israel. Instead of despising Israel, they will pay, pay their due respect to the ideal people. That's self-worship. That's exactly do what you, it do is. Do you realize yes. the, the hard words I'm reading? This is their end game. This is the tikkun olam that they're talking about in the White House. This is how you know this is not true Israelites. This is not the true Jewish people. No, it's even, not. Even Karaites would never think like this. Only the, Who wanted to be worshipped was Satan. And Satan has his own race of children on this earth. Now they say no people will rule or have power over the ideal people. Ideal people, that's basically what they call themselves in the Kabbalah, sparks, which are the divinity within Jews, divine people. Every Israelite will walk upright and will fear no creature on earth. Okay, so basically they will be worshipped. The world will therefore unite in praising Lord for Israel's universalism. Hence all the nations on earth will gladly aid in the bringing about the redemption of Israel. Historic event of Israel's redemption. I want to also remind people that when a Jewish rabbi whose book is Talmud, Zohar, and Kabbalah speaks of redemption, please, Christians, don't think that this is redemption from the sin. Or no. Well, well, they don't believe in redemption of sin. Okay, Their Messiah is not coming to redeem them from any sin. You know, this should okay. be a clue as to who President Trump really is. No, well, it should be, and it should be the because clue he tells you he, he didn't. He said, he said, "What do I need to uh, repent for?" Right, exactly. They don't repent. No one has paid attention exactly. to that about him. Exactly. But that is a Talmudist. That right. is a Pharisaic belief. Well, you know that he did receive Kabbalah Award, three Kabbalah Tree Award. And also, yeah, as so. I shared with people not long ago, you know, he studied in one of his own books there, he studied under uh, Kabbalist. Kabbalist Rabbi. He's a, he, he's a firm believer in Kabbalah and Jewish Utopia, Tikkun Olam. I mean, these are not Christian ideas, these are not Christian terms. But now, in a large numbers, Christians are turning away from our foundation of our faith to the Jewish faith. Right. And they, we just need to understand that this is a totally different gospel. It has nothing to do with true Messiah. It is Antichrist agenda. Anyway. This book is not easy to get. It's right here on your screen now for you to see. Uh, there is like two of them. Well, there's two of them in paperback right now. Maybe you can. Uh, it's worth getting Michael Higger, uh, the one that wrote it. The one, the hardcover though, is nine thousand five hundred for a used one. My goodness. Yeah, it's out of print. At any rate, there. What should we move on to next? Do you want to go with the uh, the rabbi that is uh, speaking that you have up on the yes, screen? Yes. Well, let's see. Um, or are we going to go to the PowerPoint images that we have also? Well, at first, I would like to at least. I mean, this is very long thing I have prepared, and I don't think we'll be able to, or we'll be. Here we'll get hours, it. It's okay. We get okay. into everything that we can. It's going to be posted. You take your time watching it. Here, uh, I think for this video. To one of it's students. already it's already in place. No, I need I need to know uh, what is his name. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm about ready to slap you down with this one, Mendel Rabbi Mendel Kesson. Kesson. Okay, it's a uh, Mendel Kesson. Um, one of the sisters sent it to me on my Facebook, and I I thank you so much for sending me all kinds of material. I don't have time to watch everything, and today I spent two hours watching this rabbi, and. I couldn't believe, Stephen, things that are said in these videos. If you really watch them, which I really please give people links. We tell them we give them links and we never do. What? Yeah, they don't get links. Even on our you don't get links. Who's Facebook? taking yeah. the links out of there? Must okay. be YouTube. Must be. All right, I can't right. blame. I try to always remember to put them in, but here lately, yeah, there's been several times I haven't, yes, so I apologize. But anyway, if you listen to him, he will give you the whole plan. Yeah. Uh, he will give you how they think. How would they plan? Well, and who, it's in English. Yes, 
Uh, and he lives here in the United States. It's just that his first uh, responsibility is to Israel and a Jewish uh, utopia. And I will, I will concur with one thing on this issue here. What you hear this man say tonight, I've sat with many rabbis because of friends that are right. uh, Chabad rabbis that say the exact same things. Well, that's I, what he point. says is things that I'm already aware of yeah. in, in many cases. I want to say... Ready? No. Oh, sorry. He will. He speaks here of Netanyahu, and you know how Netanyahu cannot form the government. They had several elections. It's intentional, though. Right. It is all pre-planned, all intentional. The way he's explaining it, though, he actually comes against Netanyahu in this video. He says that Netanyahu is getting punishment for not killing all of the Arabs. All right. Uh, I got to say no, something I, here, though. You you're, you're right. You're right. Yes. And let me tell you, though, so you guys are aware of this, because some people, like, they've written me, and they say, well, Rabbi Kaduri, Steve, he prophesied all of this. You guys have no idea how this is a setup. You have no idea about the man that wrote the book about Rabbi Kaduri either. And I'm not going to go into that right now, but I know personally yes. some very, very sinister things behind that. But I will say this here. They have said so much that Netanyahu, they consider him to be the candidate of Yo uh, Mashiach ben Yosef. All right, the Messiah of Joseph. They have wrote about how that Joseph prospered while he was in prison. Mm -hmm. So they're setting him up. These charges have been brought against him. Everything is a setup. They have to make everything look biblical right now. And that's what you guys really have got to understand. It's got to look biblical. I, won't, I don't want to waste time well, on all it's this. it's all maneuvering. But uh, yes. please listen to the whole video. We won't be able to play the whole thing. I'm going to play the part where he's proving who Trump's work for. Trump does not work for American people. He does not work for United States. That's what States, we're starting okay? with, right? Uh, he'll tell you, Trump has given us everything. Make sure And we... then, he, no, notice these words. Trump has given us everything. New approach to Judaism. New rehabilitation process, which is Tikkun Olam. He has messianic era has begun. He's going to say something about do something while you have a valid currency because once you don't have valid currency you will have no free will wow he will say that mark of the please, beast please know this can't guy. buy or sell saving you take the mark yes and it has nothing to and do with course, the name of jesus when you listen to this video beforehand uh he he goes into the fact how netanyahu has a divine punishment right now uh, because he did not destroy Arabs and he allowed uh, Jewish people to suffer and he should have taken Gaza out and killed them all. Okay, wow. basically just like that. Murdering so, spirit. Yes, murdering spirit of the murder is upon this man. But anyway. That's um, a Cain spirit. That, that is, you know, Herodian spirit. But yeah, anyway, a Herodian um, spirit and a Cain spirit. What do you know let's, about that? But listen, you know, in the, in the eyes of God, on the scales of justice, he obviously was found wanting, and I'm just thinking and the, this is the reason why and so on, you know. But in any case, what the, the main idea to focus on is that this is incredible, you see. There are riots in Iran, and we don't know how far that's going to go, you see. Trump has now given back basically everything to the Jewish people, you see. And the air of Rav is disappearing, they're collapsing, you see. Now we just have to see what happens and so on, who takes over, hopefully it'll be Gideon Sa, and there'll be a new kind of uh, approach to the whole concept of, you know, uh, of, uh, of Judaism. And that will begin uh, the rehabilitation process, which ultimately, of course, uh, winds up in the, uh, in the service of, uh, you know, it's a messianic process, and so on, you know. Anyway, that's my take. So it's, to, in many ways, it's tragic and so on. But the good news, at least, is that the rehabilitation process, I believe, has begun. If, which if, is amazing when you think about that. If, if he's that means we are really in the end time. Everybody's got to wake up. We are on the end time. Do tshuva now while, while, it's worth, while it's worth more. Do tshuva now while it's a valid currency. Right. You know, you wait till after Mashiach comes, there's no tshuva, because you have no free will. It's not valid as currency, you see. If he's part of Arab Rob, who is? Let's say Netanyahu. Can we say that? I mean, he is. He's, okay. he's so then is it tragic that he is falling? 
I know the just said because he's, he's still Jewish. Tremendous he, punishment. It's way more than because I guess like yeah oh yeah it's terrible. I mean I feel sorry for the guy but because in many ways he was an outstanding prime minister in certain aspects, but in many ways he was a terrible failure. You know, like I said, you know, we do not know the value of one Jewish neshama. We don't. You know, and you can't say, well, you know, we can tolerate a certain amount of deaths of Jews, you know, from Hamas or Hezbollah, well, as long as that there's no war. What are you talking about? One Jewish life is worth your whole position, like Rabbi Aaron Cutler said to Morgenthau. You know, do we have an understanding of the life of one Jew? Do you realize what he's teaching here, this, this idea of one Jewish supremacy. Line, supremacy. Like, we can kill all the Arabs, doesn't matter how many Palestinian children die. Right. But do you realize what is one Jewish life worth? Okay? And this is a Talmudic belief and Talmudic teaching that one Jewish life is a divine life. And you can basically kill any goy. It doesn't matter because they're animals. Let me kind of clarify something for the viewers on this as well. It's not just any Jewish life either. There is a very um, prejudice in Israel over right. what's Jewish and what's not. I mean, forget the whole idea that you're Jewish because you're your mother and you're not Jewish because you're Jewish of your father, which is a preju prejudice in itself. But if you're not European Jewry, if you happen to be black from Ethiopian. black Ethiopian Jews, right. you're you're th you're a third class citizen. You're on you're way down on the pole. If you happen to be a Jew from uh, from uh, from Sephardic backgrounds or Yemenite Jews, for example, mm -hmm. the ones that they took and they did all kinds of experiments on, they're not even considered like human in a way. Unfortunately, Sephardics right now, Sephardic rabbis are uniting with Ashkenazis. They are because only one reason. They know that they have to have, to, to make it look and appear that the scripture is being fulfilled, the house of Israel has to come home. Mm -hmm. So they are targeting specifically South American Jews as that right. Sephardic community yeah, it's, it's of the house of Israel. Right. He's the That's, agent for that particular job. Exactly. Yes. So I just wanted people to know that, that, that you really have to understand, for them, it is mainly Ashkenazi European false, Pharisaic, Hasmonean, dynasty, Edomite, that are the ones the that they... The Herodian Antichrist spirit. Yes, Did we say all yes, of the names? yes, that's, that's about right. I mean, listen, this, the truth is the truth. <laughs> it is, I mean, really. Okay, let's go listen to some more things he has to say. I mean, this is incredible. This man will tell you their plans. Give me a timestamp. What one's like really interesting, Steve, what we are about to hear now, I want to tell people a little bit the points before we talk about it. He'll talk about tshuva. What is a tshuva? Tshuva is... Um, the shuva? Rep no, tshuva, shuva. Repentance. Rep like, okay, Repentance, okay. okay? And he will speak that, you know, uh, he will also say what was what's the role of Trump like the Jews the rabbis they know what the Trump came for can you imagine we even didn't know Americans but they knew what the, what is the role of Trump yeah he will tell you Trump is from the Esau but he's the good Esau because he's doing the tshuva or repentance and he's giving the Jews back everything okay the tshuva and, yeah uh, this is the thing number one he'll tell you he Trump's role is number one Forget make America. He had to switch him from Democrat to Republican about 10 years ago, though, to get him exactly. on the side of the evangelicals. Yeah, exactly. The evangelicals with their Zionist uh, approach, you know. Uh, Were the right fit. Yeah, very, very right fit. So here we go. Uh, number one, he'll tell you that the role of President Trump is to assist Jews to do tikkun. Well, we just talked about the repair of the world, okay? So that's his number one role to get back all land to Israel all of the land that they fight for number two uh, role of Trump is to protect Israel from all of his enemies from all of enemies what did he do yesterday no, no. the Esau by the way Esau is to, in eyes of in eyes of Judaism or in teaching of Judaism 
Esau is Edom, and Edom is Christianity in general. Right. Okay, be it Russian Christianity, European Christianity, or Western Christianity. We are all Edom to them. Yes. And we know Itzhak Shapira teaches the same thing despite the fact he's so-called Messianic Rabbi. Okay? Now, where does this teaching of Edom being Christianity come from? Talmud. It comes from Talmud. Even we got sucked into it thinking that that's the fulfillment of Edom. And I'm not saying that there is no Edom, there, Ed, Edomites within it. Yes, because Catholic there, Church, there is within the Catholic Church. Right, because Catholic Church was infiltrated by Edomites yes. to begin with. And they're in full power. And they're in power. Many so, of the cardinals are Edomites. Right. The Pope is an Edomite Pope. And it happened very quickly. Yes. Very quickly, very early on in history of Christianity in the year of 300 under Emperor Julian. Yes. Okay. Who was a pagan who wanted back the uh, power? He gave back power to Jews, and he uh, brought Judaism to Christianity. Okay. So he redressed the true Christianity into Catholic Christianity. Yes. So yes, there is Edom within there, but to them, any Christian, just you believe in Jesus Christ, you're Edomite. Okay. And number three, he'll tell you that uh, role of Trump is to make USA great, but why? Why? For one reason. He'll tell you why. If USA is close to Jews, then the whole world will follow United States and be close to Jews and serve the Jews. This is the only reason. Wow. That's what he will tell you. And number four, he's going to say something that is about Noahide laws. Okay? He'll say, the rule of Trump is to take United States and change, change, change it to moral society by implementing highly moral judges, and that's his job. This is a Noahide law language, even though he will not speak the word Noahide. I hope you learn how to read this. Yes. Because Trump is doing this is exactly what he's doing that. with the Supreme he's Court. He's implementing judges. They're preparing everything. So again, we have two steps done. There are two steps in their plan. First, Noahide laws are in uh, education laws. Second, we could go further than that. Yes. Because they removed the Ten Commandments out of the federal courthouses and things like that. They did that for almost 20 years, getting ready for the Noahide laws to be put in place. Yes. So let's talk about, uh, I mean, let's play him. 748. 748. Here yeah, we go. Listen. I have also said something very important, that what is the job then of Tov Shebeisov? What is his job? And I mentioned that there are basically four jobs that Esav has. Now, we know Esav, of course, became Edoim. The Edoim, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, and many times, that Edoim is Christianity, and Christianity is, of course, Western civilization, Rome, Western civilization, and, um, and therefore, uh, Trump, who's the, the head, really, of Western civilization, is Esav. But it's Esav that's doing tshuva. That's a very important concept. And he has four jobs. First job is to do what? Is to assist the Jews, because that's what repentance means, in doing what? To assist them in them doing the tikkun, especially to assist them that they have to get back the land of Israel. All of it. And that's his first job. The second job I had mentioned right, is to protect Israel from its enemies. Third job is to make America great. Why? Because the key idea is that America, when it becomes great, now has unbelievable status and credibility to the world. And if they feel very close to the Jews and Israel, Israel and so on and so forth, then of course the whole world will want to be close to America. And as a result of that, they will want to become close to Israel. And that's, of course, exactly what's happening. And the fourth idea I mentioned is that his job also is to, is to take America and change it into a much greater moral society, which he's doing um, by the Supreme Court, because it is the judges that really determine the morality of the country, and also all the 140 judges, federal judges, that he's appointed. In any case, that's his job. 
Now, has he done these jobs? Well, let's take a look. We know. One, the first thing he did, which is unheard of, is he declared Jerusalem as the capital of Israel for the first time. This is the official policy of the United States to declare, in other words, that's Ace of saying to Jacob, Yaakov, Jerusalem is yours. You see, I'm not going to contest it. The second thing, of course, is that he moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. The third thing is that if Jerusalem is the capital, then guess what? Then the country, Israel, belongs to the Jews. Because obviously you can't have a capital if you don't have the country. So that's the third thing that he did. Then the fourth thing he did, and this took everybody by surprise, is he declared the Golan to be Israel. You see? Watch this, but uh, did, did you see what he's talking about? 140 judges, federal judges he's appointed. I didn't know he appointed that many of them. And we know that that is, as he mentioned, moral. And we moral know the moral law, law is Noahide, Noahide right, law. Exactly, and these judges... That's important for the Noahide laws because what is one of the Noahide laws? To have judges yes, to make sure yes, that they're yes. enforced and they're and under courts umbrella and judges, of yes. moral code. Yes, under so the moral we, code. Can you pick up on that language, Steve? This is incredible. If people this, still think, mm. if people still think that Trump was given to this nation by God Almighty by Father of Jesus, by our Abba, please think again, think again, because he, this, this particular rabbi, is proving to you that all the roles of Trump are nothing for this nation or for American people, it's all for Israel, and what is Israel right now? Of course, they stole the name Israel from the Bible, but let me tell you, it's Pharisees, Pharisaic, Talmudic, Edomites, Zohar, Kabbalah, Talmud. I mean, if you can sleep at night knowing this, that Christians are doing nothing about it and most pastors are actually helping this agenda. We have a very sad situation in the United States, Stephen. It bothers, bothers me to the bottom of my heart because I know what's coming. What's coming is a persecution of Christian people. Yes. And some of them will wake prepared. up very, very late and they will say, oh, wow, what did we do? Yeah. But it will be too late. Many people end up in FEMA camps. I mean, I was told straight up by Mossad agent that they're going to genocide the American people. These are, and you know, soon in a second video, you will see how he, they hate Christianity, Steve. They mm. hate Christianity. Anyway, uh, some of the things that maybe in this video, uh, he's talking about BB Spanish because he didn't kill enough Arabs. So imagine that. Okay, let's talk about BB for a little bit. Do you see how they can turn on their own? BB is a Jew. Sure. BB is a Jew. How many turns was he prime minister? Uh, well, they would say technically two. Okay. Uh, because he's only elected twice, but of course he keeps getting reelected, so he's right. been in several times, and I can't even exactly. tell you Do how you many times. Do you remember Mike Evans? Yes, Mike Evans said that he would be prime minister not once but twice. Does this prophecy right. only to find out that Mike Evans is in bed with the Pope? Right, uh, and it was all pre-planned. It, it was, was pre all pre-planned. Nothing was a true, genuine prophecy. Well, okay. And I know that myself. This right. is what they do in this country here. They knew that Trump was going to be president of the United States many years before he. Mm -hmm. Ever many, became many president. Years, right, right. Okay. That's right. This is, and, and they play both sides. By the yes. way, even what you see going on with this a whole issue, the whole charade with the impeachment process, you might get all excited about it, all upset. You're mad and angry at the Democrats. Notice the Jews on the Democratic side. They're playing that part to cause division. The Republicans know it. Do you think they don't know it? Sure, they know it. This is behind the veil, they're all friends. You know, in our very first video when we played them, how uh, he was there with uh, Kushner's behind him, uh, signing this executive order and welcoming the Jews. And he invited, if you're Democrats, still it's okay today. You can come here. Yeah. You see, behind the veil, they're all friends. Why? Look at it as a GPS, okay? Uh, let's say that you are to go by the decree to town where they're supposed to kill you and then you put it in the GPS and then they give you 
you know GPS gives you two road you can go this road there or maybe a little shorter road here but it leads to the same city where they're gonna kill you okay so this is where you are today America because they're going to kill and hunt Christians yes. and it's just like two ways you have one way to get there and a second way to get there and either way you fight for you're still gonna end up in the same city you will, where they're gonna right. kill you so to today to play the game of election or to be on either side steve is a very dangerous game yeah yes you it know? is yes it is That's because right. you're not voting for who you think you are you, they both work for the same plan yeah if plan a doesn't work well, we have a plan B yes. and, and so on. And whoever is coming next is just going to be by what they want. Right. And uh, The lesser of two evils is still a servant That's of right. Satan. Yes. So let's talk about back to Bibi. Okay. Bibi was elected. Uh, America was a great friend. Uh, pastors love Bibi. You used to love Bibi. What a great but, prime minister, king of but, Israel. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know. Let me remind you, and I'll remind all of our listeners as well, anybody that's ever listened to me talk about B.B., from the very day he was elected, I always knew he would never work. Yes. You know, right. I did believe, though, when Mike Evans gave the story, that really moved me. I thought this was really, that this really happened. But I always knew. Later, you knew, discovered it was a lie. Right? I discovered later it was a lie, but I knew that he would never work as a prime minister because I knew what the scripture said. God didn't want Israel to have this type of a, exactly. of a nationality. But let me just get to my point because I'll forget Steve. Uh, he is, well, my point in this was when you listen to this video, they can turn on you. This is the type of people they are and this is their God. He says, oh, Bibi has done a lot of good things for Israel, but he didn't kill all the Arabs. Why no. he didn't kill more of them? Right. Well, this is why God found him wanting and now he's punishing him and he might go to jail, but it's all deserved. And that's his shame because he doesn't know value of one Jewish life. Okay. And he didn't kill all the Arabs that he was supposed to kill. So it doesn't matter what good he did. Whoever the God of these Pharisees is, is a very bad God. It's Stephen, it's a strange God. Let me tell you, because now he's punishing Bibi. Yes. Greatly, severely. And he has to go to jail so he looks right. like Joseph. So this is the way he talks and he doesn't even realize he's portraying his God as a kind of like cruel, cold. I don't know who their God is, but it's definitely not Abba. No. Daddy of, of Christ. No. So, uh, but anyway. Maybe this is why Jesus said when he told the people to pray, or his disciples, he said, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven. Exactly. Daddy, Abba. And, you know, because Pharisees serve Satan. Uh, he's going to talk about why Bibi was punished. And he will say, number one, because he joined with Lapid in 2013, who gave terrible decrees against Orthodox um, Haredic Jews. So where is he going with that? Bibi made a huge mistake. How? Well, he has allowed a secularism in state of Israel. Okay, so he must be punished right now. This is why, because he betrayed the religious and violated religious rabbis. It's going to be a Talmudic rule. Right now, Israel is a Talmudic state where Talmud rules, mm -hmm. okay? Now they got their recognition even in America. Now, if America cannot talk against Judaism, Europe already can, there are laws there, whole world will not be able to even touch them with a word. They are the exactly. ideal people, remember? What does the scripture say? People. Who can make war? Right, who can make war with him? Right? Isn't exactly. that fulfilling prophecy? Exactly. Now imagine right now on campus, you can talk about against the Pope all you want. You can talk against the Pope of Rome. You can talk against Arabs, Buddhists. You can, you can just pick your subject and talk. And, but you can't talk against a Jew, any Jew, or Judaism, or Talmud, or Zohar. So this is proving it, Steve. Free speech is over in America. Yeah, but it's proving it. Who is fulfilling yes. this part of biblical yes. prophecy? Who, you know? who can make war? So Nobody. That's what he's going to say. What does it prove? They want religious state. And now they're getting it. 
and you know how some of the uh, some of the excuses of Michael Brown and others was how can Jews take over the world? They are mostly secular. It's probably, you know, some other Christians say, no, 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 the Antichrist is Pope of Rome. Because look at the Jews, 99% of them are secular. Mm -hmm. Well, look at what's happening in Israel now. Situation can change. That's right. And now they're saying Bibi is punished by their God because he had Lapid there and Lapid was against religious and that doesn't work. So now they're going to form religious coalition, Steve, or put in there someone who is going to be for the religious rabbis, form Sanhedrin. In fact, even Itzhak Shapira, in his latest speeches in India, said that they are praying in their daily prayers for the establishment of Sanhedrin. Now, Sanhedrin is reestablished. It doesn't have official power. Right. But like, guess what will happen next? Wait till now, you hear that it has official power. And the, the, Shapira how, is praying for, for, for no, the Sanhedrin? He actually, I was listening. Oh, that's why he's coming against the, uh, the Noahide laws, correct? No, Shapira no. was saying that in a regular Jewish Sidur, Jewish prayer book, right. that's their prayers every day for the establishment of Sanhedrin. Okay, okay, Jews, I understand Jews now. Jews generally right. pray for that every the Seder, day. The yeah. Sidur. Okay. So, uh, and people would say, okay, it can never happen because, because Jews are secular and they don't agree. You know, the thing is, it will happen. Yes, it, it will, will happen eventually. Yes. And now we can see we are in a period when Israel does not have, they cannot form coalition. Let's see, maybe the religious will get hold of uh, that state. They will start establishing Sanhedrin, meaning that giving Sanhedrin official power. Now they're p putting anti-Semitism laws globally. Nobody will be able to criticize them for anything, or you will be marked or eventually uh, marked as a criminal and go to jail for it. So they are preparing everything, Steve, for this Jewish utopia that I was just reading you about from that book. So if you want to hear it... Yeah, let's go ahead and play this right, because we're gonna, 40, we'll spend 50. 10 hours in here. The sitting Prime Minister, he must really think that he has this rock-solid case, he and his whole staff of lawyers. Uh, you know, so when you think about that, this is absolutely terrible. You know, I mean, I feel sorry for the guy. You know, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. So the question that you have to ask yourself for those who are into Hashkafa and so on is, is, what did he do that deserves such horrendous treatment? Why is God allowing this to happen? Because believe it or not, I mean, it, it, don't, don't fool yourself. This is a xerum in Hashemayim. This is a divine decree that what? First of all, what they did is they destroyed him politically. Because he was always considered invincible. Of course he's going to put a coalition. So he failed once in April, which is a terrible stain on his invincibility, so to speak. And then he failed again in September. So basically what the Rav did is he, he made him a failed politician. You see. And then, okay, so he failed. How could you represent, how could we represent the Likud? If he failed twice, why, why would they go with this guy again? You see? Now, there's no guarantee, and even if they had a third election, who says that he's going to do it again? The likelihood is that nothing changes. So anyway, the Likud has to drop him, which itself is humiliating if they do drop him, you see? So that's certainly a, a, a terrible thing that, uh, you know, uh, if he uh, uh, is uh, dropped. Oh, but then he's got to face a criminal charge so not only has God destroyed him as a politician, right? He also has allowed a criminal indictment, which is now humiliation and all the things I've mentioned. Question is, how do we understand this, really? Because it's two different things. He could have just failed politically, and that's it. Then he realizes, jigs up, as they say, and he goes and retires, and that's all. Instead, no. No, you're not getting away with just political failure. You are going to be indicted, and therefore you're going to suffer the anxiety, the anguish, the humiliation, and so on, and the, and the stain on your legacy. Why? That is the question. So I, I thought about that, you know, because like I said, they're two different things. One could happen without the other, you see? 
And we know that this is a zero. This is a judgment against them. Why would the Mosham do that? Now, you know, a lot of this stuff you can think about, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, why it happened and so on, you know? But really, when you begin to think about it, I thought about it, you know, and I have reached certain conclusions. You can, every, people can disagree with me, but you cannot disagree with the fact that this is a punishment. No way, because God controls the world, and therefore he hit him twice. The question is why? In two different ways, failed politician and criminal indictments. That's the question. I thought about it, and I, I, I feel that there are reasons for that. And I think in the end it boils down to something which I think a lot of people don't want to understand or admit. You know, <clears throat> the problem is this, when you are in power, you are responsible to use that power in a way which is righteous, you see. You can't abuse the power and do nothing. Can't do that, you see. And if you abuse your power, if you neglect what you should be doing, then in a certain sense you are held accountable, you see. So the question is, well, what did he do that's wrong, you know? Well, the first thing he did that was wrong, really, when you think about it, is when he joined Lapid, I think the year was 2013, you see? He joined, he allowed, he allowed Lapid to become part of the coalition, and Lapid, you know, gave terrible uh, decrees, government laws against the Haredim, if you remember that, in terms of education, in terms of the draft, in terms of the economy, he took away money from the Haredim. There, there were many things that he did. Okay, so he's, watch this video, he's gonna talk about how he was supposedly not give, given the religious rabbis everything they needed or wanted. And second, he's gonna say, the second reason why God punishes him is because he, God gave him this powerful IDF, right? But he didn't use the army to kill all the Arabs and Gazans. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't matter what right. they have done, what they have done to these innocent people there, but He's, this man has got spirit of murder upon him, so do, so, like his religion is about murder. But uh, what he's, he's saying, what I'm worried about is he is predicting the next government will be about re redemption, rehabilitation, meaning that they will give power to the religious um, at 55 maybe. Okay. Start at 54, he's going to talk about, you have no idea what happens when you allow Jews to suffer. All right, let's listen in. Where the guys are, you know, when they want to retaliate, because they know where everybody is. They could take out Hamas probably in a week. It's over with. Yet they allow them to exist, you see? And therefore Jews suffer. We don't realize the punishment when you allow Jews to suffer and die. That's what we don't realize, the value of the life of a Jew. Any case, like I say, I feel sorry for the man, but listen, you know, you want to accept the responsibility of being prime minister, be careful. You have to be careful, because as the Truman, Harry Truman used to say, the buck stops here. That's where it stops, you see. Anyway, <clears throat> so this is unfortunate. Uh, and, and so on. And you should know one thing, all of these things are historical and they're miraculous. We're not looking here at Teva, natural order. We're looking at Nisim. It's a miracles. No coalition, once. No coalition, twice, right? And it's not just him. Gantz can't put a coalition. He can't come, you know? Nobody's there. Why? Because fundamentally, I believe that this is the end of the era of Rav. And the next government will be the beginning, in many ways, of the redemption, the rehabilitation. Somehow things will change, you see. And, uh, and, 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 and that's why there's an absolute failure. Now, one... Okay. That, Stephen, they, you, did you see what... That's a said? mouthful. That's a mouthful. That tells you all how they're pre-planning everything. And... Just to remind our listeners, please understand that Judaism is not the religion of our prophets. No. Pharisees are not, uh, they do not, they're not embracing 
religion of all prophets are killers of the prophets. Jesus and Stephen inside of scripture, New Testament, call them killers of prophets, murderers, and their fathers murdered all the prophets, right? And Stephen was telling Pharisees, your, your fathers killed all the prophets and now you're seeking to murder son of God. So this is the very important thing. They will be behind Tanakh. They love to use the Old Testament scripture and as a cover, as a cover. Right. Okay, and then of course they created oxymoron statement of Judeo-Christian values, no such thing. Okay, but again, Phariseeism is not religion of the prophets. Pharisees are the killers of the prophets. Let me, let me make a comment to that. Those of you that remember in the scripture, and I don't know if I actually have this up on the screen to actually read this. Maybe I do. Let me just see if it's in Genesis 27 here. Um, yeah, here it is right here. I want to share this with you guys because this is a revelation that our Father gave to me. And this is in Genesis chapter 27, uh, starting at verse 40. This is a story that we read about Esau and Jacob. But it's a very interesting part here that a lot of people are not aware of. Uh, let me just make sure I'm in the right place. Yeah, verse 40 here. And by the sword shalt thou live, and thou shalt serve thy brother. Now this is... This is uh, Isaac talking to Esau right here. He said he's going to live by the sword. And it shall come to pass that when thou shalt break loose, thou shalt shake his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, Let the days of mourning for my father be at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. Now, what the Lord revealed to me, because I've always wondered, when does Esau get the yoke off of his neck? He never did it during the time of Jacob's life. It was actually prophetic. But he does tell you when it would be. He tells you right here, Let the days of mourning for my father be at hand, then will I slay my brother Jacob. Mm -hmm. Who is the father and when was the feast of mourning Yom Kippur fulfilled? According to the Gospel of John, mm -hmm. it was fulfilled. Zechariah, that time of mourning was fulfilled at the death of Christ. Wow, Stephen. That's this, yeah. this is when Esau was able to shake the yoke off of his neck and he was no longer under the servitude or bondage of Jacob because Israel, as 12 tribes, had conquered the Edomite kingdom all that time, always had Jacob, or Esau under their foot. But when, they, when, when, when the Edomite king, Herod, who first began to try to kill that, that promised son off, which was Jesus Christ, having all those children murdered. You want to know why uh, abortion prospers globally, Europe, America, Israel? It's a Herodian, murderous, child-murdering spirit is what that is. But he still had the yoke on his neck because Christ still lived. All right? But that's why that spirit is still moving. But when Christ was crucified, that's why he said, let the days of mourning for my father be at hand. So when Christ died, then we also saw the Gospel of John showed us that this was fulfilled. The, 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 basically, Yom Kippur was fulfilled at that time. He shook that off of his neck and from that point on, I mean, well, you have to admit, the Hasmonean dynasty, it was the Maccabeans, which were, I believe, the children of the Levites that during the Babylonian reign had mingled their seed with the Nephilim races there. So the Edomite race was also a serpent race, as Jesus identified him as. Vipers? Yes, they were vipers. Mm -hmm. And so, but now, what happened? Then, as we saw, look at all the Christians that died during what they call the Dark Ages. 
Uh, they talk about the Jewish people dying. Well, let me tell you something. Esau, he was the one that went out there and killed the, uh, the Jews. It was, it was Jews helping Hitler to murder Jewish people because they want to get rid of the real Jews. Right. And they wanted to get rid of the, the, the Jews that came from, uh, from Ethiopia. They want to get rid of the ones that came down from Yemen. They wanted to kill the Christians in Russia. You talk about the Holocaust, as you often say, 66 million uh, or not, that's actually Christians that were killed by the Edomites priests that had got into the Catholic Church. And of course, the Jews actually were the killing Bolshevik all the Christians. Revolution. Yeah, Bolshevik revolution the Bolshevik was revolution, a revolution was a Jewish revolution. But it was what? Not real Jews. It was Edomites. It was the fake Pharisaic Jews that were of that viper lineage that came down. Right, and people might be confused because you see there is in a lot of churches taught uh, scripture and Old Testament prophecies are taught through Jewish glasses and they think that Edom is truly Christianity. This is why Christians are becoming ex-Christians and they're attacking their own Christians. And there is this anti-Christian, anti-Jesus spirit right now, this, this Herodian spirit that is through America. So this is why I fight There's so no yoke hard, on his you know? neck anymore. That's right. So. Who is actually Edom? Is this Christians, as the as this Jewish rabbi said? Well, let's move on, Stephen, to um, an, our, another slide. Next slide. I don't know. Are we going to a video or? No, I think I wanted them to see that. Um, the the. It was an article. Oh, an article. Sorry. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. We've got this okay, one here. Um, over 200 yeah, well, Israelis. That was just an example of a 200 Israeli rabbi signed letter thanking Trump for fulfilling prophecy of Jeremiah. Um, this is incredible. If you look at the way rabbis speak of Trump, and you can see that Trump is their puppet. Basically, Trump is Israel first, and he was put in a position of power to further this their Messiah coming and creating this earthly Jewish kingdom under pretense of United States first and make America great again. Watch Michelle Bachman. I will say that. Watch Michelle Bachman. I can, I'm not prophesying. I don't prophesy things. I'm no. just saying watch because, you know, we heard this a little while back that Jared Kushner and Ivanka uh, were pressuring uh, Trump to drop Pence for the next election and take a woman on board. Oh. Now, Michelle Bachman was just calling on for one of the uh, uh, nations. Oh, she's in that prayer. She yes. goes to Knesset to pray and with the Christians. And she's calling right. for this new, uh, for this election in this country, and I forget which country it was, that they need to make sure they recognize Israel as the, the capital and that they move their embassy right. there. And she was the one who did this speech on repentance of Christians for everything they did to Jews, not to yes. mention that well, I know most Christians, Stephen, let's talk about this just a little bit here while we are here together. Why should we repent for what we did to Jews when Christians who love Christ always protected Jews, Steve? They're making it look like we are some kind of murderous, bloody uh, Christians with murder spirits who just kill, you know. Uh, so many stories of Christians giving their own lives and risking their own lives to, to uh, you know, protect Jewish children during Holocaust. They embraced the Jewish people and hid them in their houses and their basements. All of these are forgotten because these were Christian people. Exactly. But then, was it really Christians that murdered Jews? No. Hitler. No. Hitler was not true Christian, okay? And the Zionist well, movement allowed 800,000 Jews to go to their death. Right, but Hitler was supported by Rothschilds. Yes. He was supported and financed by Rothschilds. Rothschilds financed both sides of the war. The Rothschilds also financed even before when it was Pope Pius XII, before he was the Pope of Rome, right. he had gotten a loan, or he, had, he was behind the loan from the Rothschilds for the Vatican. Right. So there again, we're talking about the Edomite background to this. The Vatican and the Edomite uh, power of the Pharisees there are married together. Mm -hmm. 
This was the fulfillment of that scripture that when I kept talking about how that uh, Psalm uh, 83 and also not only that, but Obadiah's prophecy, they had to come together in a marriage there. That was Edom. And even Michael Brown and a lot of Jews, we played examples of Jewish rabbis admitting that they ran the uh, Bolshevik Revolution, that communism is a Jewish idea, Jewish movement. And uh, Bolshev Bolsheviks killed 66 million Christians. Now, yes. where is repentance for that? Exactly. Where is repentance for that? They're not going okay. to. Yes, exactly. So, and who killed our prophets and uh, early Christians and all the apostles, not to mention all of that, okay? So, no, this is not true that Christians are murderers. Please, Christians, you know, because I see Christians this ninth of Av, day of repentance, and they go and repent and cry and yes. all of that. Please don't, don't play into these cards. We are not murderers. No. Okay? No. Anyway, um, as we're going to continue into the another video of, of the same rabbi, uh, the other video is very interesting to watch. I mean, entire video, and we won't, uh, we would be here another two hours if we played everything. So I'm going to try to kind of condense it. You and did want to start at 2057 originally. Do you still want to start there or a different, or a different uh, he's uh, going spot? Into, in this video, he's going to explain how Christianity is Edom, they're the Esau. Okay, and how this is a Zohar Kabbalah belief. That's what he's going to okay. say. Uh, the Tikkun is a rectification, but it has to be suffering. That's what he says. Now, I have a bad news for Trump in a way. Trump should definitely listen to this message. If anybody can, please, if you know Trump, just send it to him. He needs to listen because he's going to say the same thing. I mean, there you go. This is their God. Okay. Trump does great thing. He's a good guy. All right. He's a good Esau, good part of Esau mm -hmm. because he's doing chuba. He's doing the repentance and he's giving everything to Jews. That's what he's going to say. Mm -hmm. But he says, but still, but still Esau is bad. And the rest of Esau is anti-Semitic and somebody's got to suffer for it. So you see, God is going to punish Trump anyway. Oh, wow. So there is nothing good you can do, <laughs> Trump, because you're going to be punished anyway. Uh, it's not this loving God. The Pharisees don't have a loving God that he would give you Maybe this credit. is why they're setting him up for this uh, impeachment uh, issue. He's talking about impeachment. The whole video is about it. He's explaining it. So this is not a... This is one, you know, at the end of these two videos, Steve and I concluded there is a major psychiatric illness here. Wow. That is like a major Where, where should we start to um, give people a good what, me, balance in this? Check, I have a lot of points. He's going to talk about Russia. And, oh, when you listen to this video uh, independently at home, once we give you links, maybe, uh, what I want to say... <laughs> He's going to say that... Uh, I'll make myself a note. <laughs> He's going to say that Russia uh, became communist and communism was bad. But his, what he's failing to tell people is that communism was actually a Jewish movement. And he's blaming it on the Goy. On Goyim. That, you know, then he's saying that USA has a different spirit uh, of Edom, which is pleasure-seeking. Right. See, he, again, Goim. Right, yes, I, rem I remember that part in, in the United video myself, States yes. have this bad spirit, and the, the Esau in the United States is pleasure-seeking. Stephen, who runs all, their, all the porn sites? The Pharisaic Jews. The, the Jews? Yes. It might be atheistic, but they're Kabbalistic yes. and Zohar believing. Yes. Who runs all the film industry? And all the gambling casinos. And, and gambling, right. And don't think that Trump, do, don't try to use Trump for the excuse because it were all Jewish guys that bailed him out of his so problems anyway, in gambling casinos. So anyway, he's blaming on Gentile people things that it's actually Jews who run them. Yes. He's blaming on Russian communism, yet it was Jews who The movie it. industry, everything, yes. right. the, the, the theme and then parks. And he's saying that Europeans are killers and imposters because they killed Jews during Holocaust. Well, he, again, Hitler was financed by a Jew, a Rothschild, who created Israel because he needed the Holocaust, so he has a reason to create Israel. You know, this is the thing, Stephen, that if you listen to him, this is absolutely mind-boggling that he's blaming this on Gentile 
Christian. Let's play parts that we okay. have where it speak where he speaks more about Trump. He's I think that would be of, a good. Thing. Uh, oh, 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 I think a, the twenty six here would be very good for that. Esau and, is evil, last king of a turn, evil seven. Uh, that's tr oh no, he's talking about how eighth king is the Trump. Yes, and the eighth king changes everything of the previous seven evils. So the mm -hmm. eighth one is Trump, and next is Messiah coming. That's how close we are. Of course, there are messiahs, anti-messiah. He exalts Putin right now. He says Putin is a friend of Israel. Sure he is. He even admits that when Israel bombs Syrians, Putin's allow it, allow this. Okay, so he's... It's something we already know. Right. Uh, he says that Trump is a messianic figure. Okay. Um, let me see. Good Esau. How about... Um, let me see. If you're wanting to save time, that's my thought. If you just want to save time for the people, we can just play one section of it. He says that Americans uh, partly suffer in the United States. He, oh, that, that's kind of interesting. He says that, that Trump allows, I mean, God allows Trump to suffer for all the sins of Esau, uh, Edomites, which are Christians. And he says that Americans are suffering, that Edomites are suffering right now. He explains how United States is politically divided. It's a political civil war. So, and, and this is exactly what they wanted. So I don't know what you want to play for people. Uh, hold on. I actually want to go into my part of what I want to prove that early Jewish sources prove that Esau or Edomites were actually Jews. Yeah, we can get into that. But um, but I, w I would go, all right, this one here, this is older, will serve the younger. Let's go to this second. But let's go ahead and play first 26 here where he shows the, uh, because we can use this to well, prelude the Esau. Okay. Okay, and then we'll come back to that one there on 2059. Okay, let's do it like that. And then that way we can go right into the part of your uh, PowerPoint presentation that you had done at one of the meetings there. Listen into this right here. I want him to say. Esau is evil in Zohar. Let's it's also very interesting because the Torah clearly says that there are kings among Esau before there was a king of the Jews. Now, it's interesting that the Zohar, Kabbalistically, that it calls these eight kings, right? It calls them the root of evil. That's what it calls them, and so on. But what it says is interesting. It says the last king, which is Hadar HaMelech, you see, what he does is he overturns the evil of the seven, previous seven, which is interesting. It was not, that even though there are eight kings mentioned, Right, but but the last one Hadar Melech overturns the evil of the seven, and that's why it's called Hadar. Hadar means Mahader, means to overturn. He actually overturns the evil of the seven. You see, which means that the evil of seven or the evil of these kings of Edom will not always be evil, because Hadar Hamelech, King Hadar, overturns the evil of the seven. Very important it's a prophecy. And not only that, but when it uses the concept of kings by Asa, by Edom, it says these are the kings of Edom that ruled before the ruled the name Meloch Melech, a king, one king. Doesn't say it should say these are the kings of Edom that ruled before the before there was kings of Israel. Doesn't say that, you see. So what that means is that If we compare his uh, eighth king, as he calls it, Hadar Hamelech, uh, mm -hmm. to Revelation of the kings that are mentioned there, the eighth would not so much be overturning the evil, but he will be worse than all the seven that were before him. Anyway, uh, I want him to acknowledge that Christianity, according to Judaism, is Esau, okay. so people can hear it, and then we can speak Where's about that at? Uh, maybe, um, let's go. 1820. Let's see what happens. For all time. See, you know, it's each one is trying to dominate and control the other. And when one is high, obviously, that means they've dominated, then the other one will be low. So if Ace of is high, then he has succeeded in dominating, right? And therefore his kingdom, right? 
surpasses Yaakov, which is the Jewish people, okay, or vice versa, reverse, where Jacob, Yaakov, will, his kingdom will dominate, and Esau, of course, will be uh, subservient to Yaakov. But they basically never equal. It's like a seesaw. You know, when one is high, the other is low. When one is high, the other is low, and so on, you know? They're never really equal. There's always somebody on top, just by the nature of the seesaw, you see? And that's a very important idea, because the Novi, the, what the prophecy is saying to Rivka is that there's no such thing as equality by these two nations. One will, what they're trying to do, each one is to, going to try to dominate, and therefore what? Resolution. You see, so in what, may, in what way? What is that supposed to mean? So therefore, the older will serve the younger if the older re remains righteous. Because that's really the job of Esau. The job of Esau is to serve Yaakov. Why? <coughs> because the job of Esau is to contend with the world, the physical world, right? And to subdue it toward righteousness, to channel all the physicality toward spirituality. And if okay, so basically let us summarize what he's saying. He's speaking of the prophecy of uh, Rebecca having two children in a womb. They fight and then it's told to her that she has two nations in a womb. And now, uh, of course, he's saying at the end that Esau, or which became Edom, which is Christianity. In this video, he clearly identifies uh, Christianity as Edom or Esau, okay, will serve Jacob. Why? And he just said it because the job of Jacob is to tikkun olam, meaning repair the world and bring spirituality. So right. this is how he uh, comes to that conclusion that eventually all the Christians or goyim are going to serve the Jews. But um, I wanted to bring uh, the PowerPoint which, as we bit. pointed out through the scripture, right. though, that that would be wrong because in reality, uh, Esau will break off that yoke at the time of mourning, and then he begins to be the one that which rules. Which you already talked about. Yes. Uh, that's, I wanted you to talk about this now, and you kind of prematurely talked about it. So Very I hope sorry. people understand that uh, they will understand what you try to say. Uh, on last conference I kind of touched on who is Edom what is very interesting the spirit of Edom is murder and especially beheading you know that how it's a Herodian spirit who beheaded John Baptist and uh, what's interesting Steve that in very early Jewish sources they identified themselves as Edom and later they changed it to Christianity yes uh, that was after after destruction of the temple happened uh, this is when the rabbis changed the definition of Edom being Jews into Edom being Christians and now, uh, through and Jewish a lot of people glasses, have no idea. Of they this. have no idea. So, and I presented this a little bit. And uh, our sister, Dean Lopper, who wrote the book about Kabbalah, and exposed the Kosher Pig book by Itzhak Shapira, she actually has a very good uh, article on Edom, very detailed, on historical points of how did Edom became Christianity, okay, throughout right. the, and why. But originally in Jewish sources, Edom, they say in their own Jewish encyclopedias that Edom are Jews. So let's see. Um, next slide. Okay. I thought it was going to work the way I was hoping, but it doesn't want to do it that way. So I'm going to have to do it the hard way. More difficult way, no. yes. I why didn't. Did I don't happen? know. I don't know why that happened. It so. always happens to us something. Yeah. That I mean. tells you we are not very good in. Yeah. Well, it technology. was working, but then it then it stopped doing what. Well, maybe. Oh, okay. Here it is. Right here. All right. Here, let me. Okay. okay. So that was next. Um, there is a book by Daniel Patrick called The Matrix of God, which speaks exactly on history of Edom and how, who are the Edomites. The Septuagint translated from the Hebrew 
by 72 Jewish scholars over 300 years before Christ reveals the identity of God. Notice that the Hebrew word that Masoretic text translates as Agog is translated as Gog in the Septuagint. His king shall be higher than Agog and his kingdom shall be exalted. That's in Masoretic text. What is in Septuagint? His kingdom will be lifted up above Gog and his kingdom will be increased. I don't know why I put it there. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. Oop. Doop. Okay. It doesn't tell me which now, ones are which. Uh, Jewish historian Josephus, uh, in his Antiquities of the Jews, chapter 9, he says, Hyrcanus took also Dora and Marisa, that, that's just countries or, or places, okay. cities of Idumea, which is the Greek word for Edom, and subdued all the Edomites uh, and permitted them to stay in that country if they would circumcise their genitals and make use of the laws of the Jews. And they were so desirous of living in the country of their forefathers that they submitted to the use of circumcision and the rest of the Jewish ways of living, at which time, therefore, this befell them, and they were here after none other than Jews. So this is a Jewish historian admitting that they in Edomites incorporated among the Jews. Yes. They took upon themselves Jewish laws, Jewish ways, traditions, the and customs, customs, everything. And from then on, they were known as the Jews. Exactly. Okay? So, so it is them. It is this rabbi who is an Edomite. Exactly. the Christians. Uh, another proof from the Jewish sources, again, the standard Jewish encyclopedia, 1966, New York, page 592 says from then on Edomites constituted a part of the Jewish people Herod being one of their descendants this is out of their own encyclopedia Steve exactly I mean and then they change it in Talmud to, to say that, that there are Christians just because it's convenient Exactly. To maneuver prophecies so they can have their domination, Jewish utopia. So the Encyclopedia right. Judaica in Jerusalem, Israel, Encyclopedia Judaica Company of 1971, volume 6, pa six page 378, it says the non-Israelite Edomites became a section of the Jewish people called Edom. Right. So, so how, do you, how do you figure all this, right? Exactly. Oh my goodness. And then we have also the Jewish Encyclopedia, New York and London, Funk and Wagnalls Company, 1904, Volume 5, page 41. The non-Israelite Edomites were then incorporated with the Jewish nation Edom or Edomia. Yes, this is uh, the, the examples the, are only showing their own Jewish sources. So now tell me how their own Jewish sources later became in Talmud that Edomites are Christians. Exactly. And it's just, it's just one case after another. The New Standard Jewish Encyclopedia from 1977. From then on, they, the non-Israelite Edomites constituted a part of the Jewish people. Herod, king of Judea, being one of their descendants. Uh, Edom or Edomia. Yeah, he was on the section Edom, Edomia in the encyclopedia. There is one more example, Flavius Josephus, Antiquities of the Jews, okay, chapter 9, verse 1, page 279, quote, the Edomites were hereafter no other than non-Israelite Jews. So basically they became known as Jews and that's who they are today in the state of Israel. They're Edomites. Do they have a spirit of Edom spiritually? Are they Edomites? Definitely. Yes. Because spirit of Edom is spirit of murder, beheading of John the Baptist. What are the Noahide laws? What are the punishments? Beheading of Christians. Exactly. What did Herod do? Killed children to and younger. Down, right? What did he tell two wise men? Oh, he lied. First of all, he was a yes. liar. He yes. lied, okay? And think about that right. one. Think, think about being a liar when he said, Oh, I want to worship him too. Why don't you come back and Pretending tell me? Pretending to want to be a follower of Jesus Christ right. only to try to find right. out where he's at to kill him. That's the same thing happening today. You have these Edomites. Yes. Posing as believers, 
Yes. To who? To the wise men, to those that are supposed to have the knowledge and wisdom of the gospel and know who Christ really is. And unless God intervenes as the angel did for them, you would take them right to him and they would want to kill him. That's right. So then, of course, Herod was so angry because wise men never came back and told him what the child was. Right. Mm -hmm. Then he went on his rampage. And that's what they're going to do today. When their little mission here ends up not being fully successful to force all these Christians underneath the, the Talmudic reign in Israel, they're going to go then on their murderous campaign, mm -hmm. and then what are they going to do? They're going to start killing Christians. That's right, and I am for, you know, here to voice for Christian people, but the Jewish people who are believers in Christ are going to suffer first, Stephen, Yes, they because are. Because they, uh, first of all, what they do, they strip you of Jewishness, they say not even a Jew, because under Israeli law, if as a Jewish person you convert to Christianity, you forsook your Jewishness. Did you know They're that? going to treat yes. them like Palestinians. Exactly. They, gonna, they will kill them and then of course... There will be no on. due process for no, them at all. There is no due process on the Talmud or on no. the Noah High Laws has no due process, no. of course. Anyway, Stephen, so I think we are at the end right now and... Uh, thank you for watching tonight and don't forget you can support this broadcast. You can visit our website, israelinewslive.org. Our address also. I don't know where it's going to appear right now because I don't see it anywhere. But anyway, we'll find a way to put our address up here for you. It will be in the description uh, below. And at the end of the video, you'll see it appear at the very end if you want to, if you want to support by mail. Uh, Patreon. Check out Patreon. Uh, join us up over there. We don't post all the time, but we do try to get some things up there. Yana writes over there as well. In fact, uh, we're fixing to be doing a broadcast on uh, Shabbat. Mm -hmm. uh, how yes. Shabbat is actually kept biblically. So that's going to be on Patreon. So you might want to check that out. Hopefully that will be up sometime uh, by the end of this weekend. We trust it's all a blessing to you. Thank you for watching for your patience as well, and blessings to you all. In this world of Ain Shalom, there is no peace.